Happy Friday, gentlemen. Welcome back to the shop. Remember, nobody works, nobody gets hurt. We are gathered here under the cold gaze of disapproving owl, the pump. I've been meaning to put this back together, but he's kind of growing on me. As far as straw bosses go, <laughs> I've had worse. This nose is even, it's not even brown. This is not a Whitworth fitting, metric fitting. Made a mistake. This is BS. PP, British Standard Parallel Pipe. You see, it's not tapered, it's parallel. And these doughty seals, the Antipodians call them, that just means from the other side of the world. I will never speak down to you as though you're dumb. Remember, folks, there are no stupid questions, only stupid people. I know, on account of me being one. How do you get the doughty seal off? Because they don't fit over the threads. Well, you take the, take the metal and then the O-ring just pops right off. This is neither a pry bar chisel nor punch. It's all three. <laughs> ah. We like to get together here on the struggle bus. Each one teach one. Thank you. I don't know it all. Nobody does. What we're doing, though, is we are building up a lexicon of mechanical parts that make up the entirety of the known universe. We have here uh, dash six, uh, probably dash 20, J-I-C, a male. Dash 20, of course, in sixteenths is an inch and a quarter. And then we would have a dash 16, BSPP, British Standard S Parallel Thread. These are fantastic because you can clock them in any orientation. You're not relying on the threads to seal. You're relying on the O-ring. And it comes with a flat spot machined and a jam nut and a backup and then a doughty seal. I don't know what you call this outer ring. I'm sure somebody in the comments knows. Is it the best thing that the British have ever invented? Possibly not, but I can't think of anything better. <laughs> this is a low pressure barb fitting. Three eighths of an inch. <laughs> I give you a wee joke. Not about what's under your kilt. It's between you and the missus. The good Lord above. Finishing up on Scotland. Clucks over to Gabriel looking down on his beautiful creation. Mountains. Verdant valleys, lakes, rivers, the salmon, the elk, beautiful daughters of Medea, bold and terrible, witchy and lovely, brave men, and a touch of the poteen, the pure Scotch whiskey. Have you ever seen such a beautiful place? Gabriel, looking over at Geodes' creation, says, A beauty, a bonnie, and a joy forever. However, I fear that the men in Scotland will become soft, because it's far, far too beautiful. The land of milk and honey will corrupt them. And the Lord says to Gabriel, you have yet to see the terrible neighbors I've given them. Okay, so barb fittings, they fit in like this. If they, if they don't go in because the hose is too stiff, you can spit on it or you use a little soap, some Windex. Windex works great. You can also use Windex to apply decals. So you can move it around a little bit if you don't get it perfectly square or if there's bubbles. And then when the soap dries, the Windex dries, it, it doesn't do anything. It, it doesn't affect the adhesive. So, little trick there. Some Windex. And then we have a gear clamp. This is a cheap gear clamp from China. We have good gear clamps that are stainless steel as well. Gear clamps aren't the best. They're really good because they are serviceable. But... If you're handling the hose, if it's on a tool or something like that, far better, you know, you can, they'll cut you from stem to stern and then you end up putting some electricity tape on there and then it gets all gooey and gross. Far better 
are these menders, these hose menders. You see like, like so. Those are ear clamps and you need the, the Nipex nippers. Yeah, I know. I know how it's pronounced. There's no better way to find a fucking douchebag than to pronounce something incorrectly and just see what happens. <laughs> so we have the Nipex nippers, which is probably an illegal word to say. They, a nipper is actually a really important mission in a mine. The nipper is a fella that keeps the, everybody working. He delivers the drill bits. He, you know, whatever you need, he nips and goes and gets it. It's super, super important. It's, it's a little meat on the bone. It helps guys out. It keeps, uh, keeps the drill turning and keeps the boys getting their rounds. However, if you go to some of these newfangled mines, they're not allowed to call them nippers. They're called uh, one place in on terrible. They called them spiders instead. There you go. Now when you got to siphon some gas out of the boss's truck, it doesn't get caught on your braces. Then for low pressure industrial and automotive applications, we have push locks. These are just nylon hose, tubing, pushes in like that, seals up and locks, and then they are reusable. You just pull on them and they come right up. They have them on little tiny cylinders and so forth and process automation. Pretty ubiquitous, cheap, super, super convenient. There's a barbed bender. We're going to show you a punch lock on a horse cock. This is 400 PSI air water hose. Now this is stiff as a wedding prick. So a little spit. I'll go a long way. <laughs> Just work it in there. I got to share a beautiful anecdote from a fella down in the doobly-doo Hiawassee River. And I'll just read it to you. I have to tell you my favorite fitting story. I designed and built chemical plants and made high-end stuff for the pill makers. They were post hole diggers, medical doctors, and whatnot. Now our reptilian salesman comes to me. I have to interject here because, hey, psychopaths need to feed their kids too. If only to eat them later, fatten them up. The thing is about good sales guys is they realize that the modern corporation is a golem. It's a fiction that has all the rights of a citizen except that it can't vote and its only purpose is profit. Now these slimy sales guys, they've learned this and they know that as long as they don't get in trouble, anything goes. The hardest part of any job is not Building the job is not supplying it, it's not specking it, it's not nothing like that. The hardest part of the job is selling the job. That is why these filthy, disgusting, subhuman psychopaths make so much filthy lucre. Because the hard part is selling the job. Moving on. A reptilian salesman comes to me and asks to set up our trucks with a rare set of fittings to provide mating fittings to the customers. These are the post hole diggers, the PhDs, the brainiacs. So I asked him why. And he said it was so that only our tank truck would flange up to the entire plant and we would get 100% of the business, nudge the competitors out. I said, there is no way our clients, brainiacs, are that fucking stupid. So the salesman explains that the design of the system also needs to be signed off and approved by the government FDA guys. And the customer, once it's signed off, they'll never alter the plant in order to maintain, in order to please the FDA, to maintain that compliance. You getting all this, he says? The slimy sales guy wants a bastardo fittings to obtain a monopoly with the customer. These guys had more degrees than a thermometer, but they couldn't see through the scam. And what do you know it worked? The PhDs told the competitor that their equipment wouldn't flange up with the customer's plants. So cha-ching for our company. The fittings, you ask? 
It was one and a quarter thingamajink based on British thread. And then another full of replies. I didn't know Apple made fittings. This is why we love standards. There's so many to choose from. You get these fast lock hose clamps, stainless steel, come in different sizes. And then you get the tool. I'll give you the tool for free if you buy enough of these. That's the Gillette razor. You buy the holder, you just keep buying them razors. We'll give you the holder for free. And this is a little fucky. There's a way to do this. If you're doing this every day, you know how. That's what we call in the trade a clue. <laughs> I don't do this every day. But here's the idea. The cinch is down on here. You cinch down and you give it a little wackadoodle. That dimples it, locks it in. And then you can break it off. Like so. Further to that little tip of just taking a, a couple seconds to increase your capacity, to hone your craft, to hone the craft that feeds your kids. So you mark, I'm inventing flashcards here. You mark caps and plugs with the size, you just let them sit on your desk, wherever, the top of your box. Once in a while you pick it up. What size is that, dash six? No, dash eight. I'll get it right the next time. And when you're using these, you go to the crib, you go and get some of these fittings. Make sure some of them don't make it back. They go into the junk drawer. That way, when you're out, you don't wanna be that guy where you got every spare earplug and glove in the bottom of your box and nobody's got any, they gotta go and ask you, hey, do you have, you, know, you don't wanna be that guy, don't be that guy. But at the same time, some of these, if they don't find their way back to the fitting box and they get reordered on the regular, it's a good thing to have these laying around because a lot of times you'll get screwed over by not having caps and plugs or the proper caps and plugs. And there's something to be said for professionalism to have your hoses capped off properly so they're not dripping everywhere and that there's not dirt getting in there. I worked a lifetime ago up north, uh, diamond mine when it was first going in and working for a contractor in the summer, uh, drilling contractor. And the master, he was an Irishman, a lovely, lovely man he was. And he had a drill rig apart that was broke down. Something wrong with it, the, unit, the uh, PT pump on a Cummins. It must have been a Gardner Denver drill, I believe. It wasn't an air track. It, this filthy, disgusting old piece of tired iron dripping with whatever, schmoo, he had on the top of the pump and the mating high pressure lines. Beautiful dash six, no, dash four. JIC caps and plugs in all of them. And I asked him, it, it was so striking that I had to point it out. And he said to me, you know, sometimes you just want to look like you're doing a good job, even if you're not doing a good job. Sometimes just showing up is all you need to do. Just look the part. And it follows another thing. Fellas constantly, well, not constantly, but pretty regular, ask, you know, I'm a little freaked out. I got a job in a mine or I got a job at a factory and it's, quite frankly, it's a little above my pay grade or I'm, I'm intimidated. So here's the beauty about that, is if you just get in line and shut your fucking mouth, you'll be fine because the institution will draw you along until you get up to speed. It's far better to keep your mouth shut and be thought a fool than to open it and be known a fool. So if you're new and you're intimidated, just get in line and shut your mouth, partner. You're going to be fine. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in advice.